So hello everyone and welcome back to this next lecture in the DC to DC converter series and we had left off at the flyback converter specifically when we look at the circuit we had seen that we needed to connect this bleeder resistor in the primary the transformer in order to have the circuit work because this resistor bleed, bleeder resistor draws the current or rather allows the induced TMF in the transformer winding to have a path to flow and this is what is important to make the simulation stable. So with this I will continue now to create a flyback converter. So as always before I start the lecture a little bit of brief background that if you are interested in these kind of video lectures but you would like something a little more comprehensive I have a full length course on the MOOC website Udemy. This is one of the first courses which is simulating power electronic circuits using Python and in this course I talk about the basics of how to simulate circuits with Python. I talk about installing Python, installing Python power electronics, some basics of power electronics and finally there is a case study of how to simulate a buck converter using Python power electronics. If you are interested more on the signal processing side I have another course which is basics of digital signal processing for power engineers and in this I talk about how you can design and implement filters using Python. So there is a little bit of theory of signal processing and finally there is a case study where you can simulate or rather you can design and implement a low pass filter and a notch filter using frequency response characteristics with Python packages such as NumPy and SciPy. And finally the latest course which is simulation of magnetics for power electronics using Python. In this I talk about how you can simulate magnetic components using Python power electronics. So there is a little bit of theory about inductors, coupled inductors and transformers and how you can convert that theory into simulation models. And finally there is a case study of how to simulate a flyback converter using Python power electronics in which we actually simulate a multi-winding transformer and that to a high frequency transformer. So the link for these three courses is provided in the description for this video. So if you're interested, please do check it out. So with this, let me return back to the course. So the most important thing is we need to get, we need to move from our usual uh, topology. That is this initial topology where we have DC source connected to the primary of a transformer. We have this bleeder resistor. This bleeder resistor needs to go. Number one. Then number two, we have connected to the secondary of the transformer. This is the primary of the transformer. So this primary of the transformer is connected to the input DC voltage source through the switch. This secondary of the transformer is connected to the load, but there is an intermediate stage, right? That intermediate rather, that intermediate stage is this one. So for example, I have connected at the secondary before connecting the load. I have connected a filter. Now this filter I have named as buck filter because it is similar to the LC filter that occurs in a buck converter. So for example is this one. Just an inductor and capacitor in order to produce a smooth output. So this is what I am doing. Now this will have to change. Right? Now what I am going to do is the first thing we are going to change is we are going to remove this bleeder resistor. Right? Because this was just to get the simulation working. So let me save this. So now that we got rid of this bleeder converter, bleeder resistor rather, we need to now figure out how we can keep the current flowing when the switch is turned off. So as we said before, the challenge is when the switch is turned on, the primary is energized by the DC voltage, right? When the switch is turned off, the transformer is completely cut off, right? There is no path for the magnetizing current or the magnetic energy in this transfer to transformer to flow anywhere. That is the problem. Now, in a flyback converter, they do a very clever trick. That is, they change the dot polarity of the transformer. So currently, we are using a normal transformer where the upper terminal has the dot polarity, right? So let me go over to the transformer. So we have, if you look at the transformer, these are the two windings. The upper terminal of both have the dots. So I'll just put a dot here. I mean, I'll remove it. But imagine there's a dot. Right, So we are placing a dot on the upper winding. So what that means is that if whatever is the polarity of the induced EMF on one of them, the same polarity will exist on the other. Right Now how that translates into, into an actual circuit is when the switch is turned on, the current through this winding is increasing because we are applying a voltage. Right, 
Therefore, the current will increase. Now, as per Lenz's law, the induced EMF in this winding will be such so as to oppose the cause which produces it. Since the current is entering the winding and is increasing, this induced EMF will have a positive polarity towards the upper terminal, which means that the same positive polarity will occur on the other terminal as well, right? That is the other winding. So this will also be positive. And since this is positive, we have now the diode rectifier on the secondary forward bias and it starts conducting. Now, what we need to do is we need to change it such that when the primary is being energized, the secondary does not conduct or rather the diode in the secondary does not conduct because we need to ensure flow of current during both cycles when the switch is turned on and when the switch is turned off. So therefore, this dot will have to be removed from here and placed here. So when the current in the primary is increasing, the positive, the induced EMF in this winding will continue to be have a positive terminal, positive polarity at the upper terminal. But now the induced EMF in the other winding will have a positive polarity at the lower terminal. Now what that means is that the diode now will not conduct or rather let me go over to the buck filter. This, this, this circuit, right? This diode will start conducting because now this induced EMF is positive here. So therefore the result is we need to change this. Okay. We need to change the circuit. So what I will do is the first thing let's go over actually let's go over and process the circuit schematic because we need to process it bit by bit and when we make changes to the circuit it's always advisable to do so so let me process the circuit schematic because we've gotten rid of our bleeder resistor so that's the first step so you see there is no error that's a good thing let's confirm that the bleeder resistor is indeed gone so we'll go to the voltage source and we see there is no bleeder resistor, right? So good, we've got rid of that circuit. Now, the next part we're gonna do is we're gonna change, we're gonna change something, we're gonna change the polarity here. Now, the way we have designed it is, we have considered, let me just delete this before I forget and I cause an error. So, before I forget, I will say that this winding is in such a way that the polarity of this voltage source is such that the positive polarity is toward the upper terminal, right? And the same for this one. That's how we model the voltage sources. The polarity is always towards the upper terminal. Now, or rather the terminal where there is the dot. The current is always entering at the dot. So therefore, this ammeter is measuring a current downwards, right? And the variable resistor has no polarity. So let's go and confirm that this is the case. So if we go back to our transformer, we'll see that this is the ammeter winding. So for example, this is the winding in the first terminal. So you see the position is 3G, the positive polarity is downwards, 4G, which means it's pointing downwards. And the same for the winding too. So coming here, you see that both ammeters are measuring a current that is going downwards right? Because that is usually the convention I use. Current is flowing into the dot in both of them, right? Now, let's keep going. The next thing you see is the control voltage source. The polarity of both of them is upwards. You see the position of the component is at 6G. The positive polarity is 5G. And the same for the other one. Position is at 6I. The positive polarity is towards 5I. So, both of these have a positive polarity that is upwards, right? This one and this one. The variable resistor has no polarity. Now, if I want to change this, I will reverse the polarity of all of these components, the ammeter and the control voltage source. This way, I will move the dot to the lower terminal. So let me do that. So let me see. This is winding two transformer one. Just confirm that and make sure that this is indeed 3i, which is the case. And I'm going to edit this to make it y that means it is now pointing upwards so i'm changing the post changing the terminal of the dot this is winding to transformer one position is six i let's confirm it this is indeed the case let me change it this will now become 
7i because now it is pointing downwards. And with this, there is no other terminal that we need to do. There is one more which I should change and that is this voltmeter as well because let's change all of them, right? So this voltmeter winding to transformer 1 at position 7k, let's confirm it. This is 7k. This we can edit to make it 8k. So the positive polarity of this winding is also pointing downwards. So let's save this parameter. A voltmeter is also important because this is an internal voltmeter of the model. We are measuring the voltage and we are adjusting the induced EMF. Therefore, this has to change with the dot polarity of the terminal. So we have now reversed the dot polarity of the transformer. Now what we can do, we can continue and change the rest. So we have this secondary filter, we have the buck filter and we have the load. We are not going to change the structure. What I'm going to change is the structure of the buck filter. So if you look at the buck filter, we have a diode and an ammeter, right? Because this was a buck case. Now, however, this will change. The reason is what we are trying to say is that we want this terminal or rather this diode to conduct only during the negative cycle or when the switch is turned off. So let's go once more to our transformer and figure that out. As I already said, when the switch is turned on, the current will flow into the into the winding one and the dot polarity at the upper terminal will have a positive polarity. In that case, the lower terminal will have a positive polarity. Now, which means the negative term, negative polarity of the induced EMF will be at the upper terminal. Now, when the switch is turned off, then in that case, the current will try to decrease. Actually, it will try to drop to zero. In that case, the induced EMF at the upper terminal will be negative, right? Because lens, according to Lenz's law, the induced EMF is always so as to oppose the cause that produces it. Therefore, the negative terminal, which means if the induced, polar, induced EMF has a polarity of negative at the upper terminal, it will also be negative at the lower terminal. That means the upper terminal now has a positive polarity. At this point, the diode at the secondary has to conduct, right? That is, this diode, this diode should conduct and should feed the load. So we have to get rid of this diode from here and instead place it in this forward path. That's what we have to do. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete this, cut this out, and let me place it here. It might be a little messy, but it doesn't really matter. Like I said, this is mainly for uh, clarity. And this is one of the advantages of having wire elements because then you can expand your circuit. So we can do this. There is nothing illegal in this. There does not have to be a wire element between components. There is this perfectly okay. It's okay to have components one next to each other, right? What you should not do is put a component next to a node or any, any kind of jumper label to the road. This is perfectly legal. And it is also advisable to put wire elements as much as possible so that you can insert components like this. So with this, I'm going to get rid of this and let's save this. So we have now moved the diode out from here. This is no longer the usual buck converter filter. This is now a flyback topology. And we have now moved the capacitor to, this capacitor remains as it is because the purpose of this capacitor is to produce a smooth output across the load. So now with this, let's go back and process our circuit schematic. We might have some errors because it is possible that I might have missed something, but anyway. And the circuit does not have any errors. However, there's one change which we need to make and that is we need to change the polarity of the diode. Right? Because simply cutting out the diode won't work. See, for example, if you see the component position is at 1F but the direction is still the same. So we have to change this. Let's go back. This is 1F, right? Now the current will flow towards the right. That's typically how it is because it's a DC DC converter and we want the upper term, we want the upper terminal of the load to be positive. Therefore, this diode will flow, the current will flow towards the right, which means the cathode will 
point towards 1G or 1H or any of these. It points towards the right. So let's go and change that. And I will make this 1G. You could make this 1H also. It doesn't matter as long as it is towards the right. So let's make this 1H. So with this, we are now done. All right. Now, this lecture is getting a bit too long. So therefore, I'm just going to run it and maybe stop it. Right. So let me click on the run button. And let me go to the command line. There is no error. So we are good to go. And let's just plot the voltages. So this is voltage. And you see we are getting some kind of a ringing. That will be okay. Actually, that's not the right one. I should plot maybe the output. Okay, let's plot the output voltage. Okay. So again, we're getting some kind of instability, but this is something we'll have to figure out in the next lecture, right? So what's important is we have now converted to a flyback topology. The main concept of a flyback topology or rather the trick in the flyback topology was in changing the polarity of the winding. So with this, I'm going to stop this lecture. If you have any doubts, please do post in the comments or send me an email or message me on social media, whichever is your preference. Otherwise, I will see you in the next week where we will solve this instability problem that we are getting with the flyback transformer. It could be due to any reason. It could be maybe we need to decrease the simulation time step or maybe there's some other, some other small bug which is remaining in our simulation. We'll figure it out in the next lecture. So thank you so much for listening and goodbye for now.